Good morning, class. I'm Dr. Adelike Adegbanu. Today we are considering another new topic, which you will surely enjoy. The topic we are considering today is relationships between and among conflicts. Relationships between and among conflicts. The point to start is to briefly explain the meaning of conflicts. So, the first area of a relationship between and among any issue that could be termed conflicts is the definition. So, what is conflict? Conflict, for instance, is defined as a difference of opinion regarding ideas, wishes, or desire. I take that again. Conflict is defined as a difference of opinion regarding ideas, wishes, or desire. Conflict is a state of discord caused by natural or perceived opposition of needs values and interest so it has to do with opposition of needs values and interests in essence a conflict can be internal that is the one that occur within oneself or external that is between one or more individuals. Conflicts explain many aspects of social life, such as social disagreements, conflict of interest, and the fights between individuals, group, or organization. So, in political terms, conflicts can refer to wars revolution or other struggle which may involve the use of force without proper social arrangements or resolution conflicts in the social setting can res result in stress or tension among stakeholders so conflict arises when two or more parties with perceived incompatible goals seek to undermine each other goal seeking capability. So, thus, therefore, conflict arose as a result of a different of opinion regarding ideas, wishes, or desire. So, conflict is a state of discord caused by the actual or perceived opposition of needs, values, and interests. So conflict arises in situation of competition. It could also arise in the places of cooperation. In a competitive situation, two or more individuals or parties have mutual inconsistent goals and either party tries to reach their goals and undermine the attempt of the other to reach theirs. So, therefore, competitive situation will by their nature cause conflict. So, in essence, when individual or party tries to reach their goals while undermine others, so conflict will occur. Okay, so conflict can also occur in a competitive situation in which two or more individual or parties have consistent goals. But the manner in which one party tries to reach 
their goals can still undermine the other individual parties. So that there is cooperation in competition doesn't mean it cannot result to conflict. So, so in essence, a clash of interests, values, action, or directions often result in conflict. Therefore, conflict refers to the existence of that clash. So, psychologically, a conflict exists when a reduction of one motivating stimulus involves in an increase in another so that new adjustment is demanded. Even when we say there is a potential conflict, we are implying that there is already a conflict of direction, even though a clash may not yet have occurred. So, organizational conflict is a disagreement between two or more organization members or group arising from the fact that their scarce resources or work activities and or from the fact that they have different statuses, goals, values, or perception. So when any of this occur, we can be sure that conflicts are started. So from that, we can now move to the feature or characteristics of conflict. Features and characteristics of conflict. So this is another area of relationship between and among conflicts. So any situation that will be termed as conflict, most of the time, has what we are going to discuss now as it is future. And if these features are lacking, it means the situation cannot be termed as conflict. So, number one, conflict arises when two or more individuals or group think differently. Whenever two or more people perceive one thing in different way when you have your own ideas and i have my own idea conflict has already started so in essence conflict arises when two or more individuals or group think differently and of course there is two way we are two people who think in the same way even if they are twins. So that is to tell you that uh, to avoid conflict, it is difficult. Then number two, conflict is caused by different perception that different individuals hold about the same objects or goals. So different people have different perception about the same object or goal. Just like people will say, there are many ways or there are many entrances to market. So when A, for example, A think a course of action is right and B does not hold the same opinion, it, this leads to a conflict of opinion on the same subject. So, for the fact that we don't see things in the same way or in a similar way, they are bound to be complete. And number three, conflict usually arises because of the scarcity of resources. In view of the fact that women wants are unlimited, or the resources to satisfy those wants are limited 
there is bound to be conflict because in this situation there must be competition for survival when different people will continue to struggle at least to have their own uh, share of the resources so when people compete for scarce resources they hold different views about how best they can utilize those resources to achieve organizational goals so when that occurs, definitely the conflicts conflict has set in then we move to philosophy of conflict philosophy of conflict so with regards to relationship the ideas of conflict are similar that is conflict has the same philosophy or viewpoint in this regard we are going to consider three approaches to fill any form of conflict number one is classical approach classical approach with regard to this approach management views conflicts as bad and disruptive for organizational performance conflict of opinion is meant to result in anger and at times in resentment these create disorder conflict does dysfunctional negative in nature if there was a conflict or if there is a conflict in the organizational interest and individual interest it gave importance to organizational interest as individual interest is considered subordinate to organizational interest so what we are saying here is that uh, in any situation, any idea, any any conflicting interest, if organization uh, interest is in conflict with your own interest, you have to subordinate your own interest to that of organization. This is what Henry Fayol uh, advocated. So, by the way, you have to subdue you let the organizational interest come over of the field instead of your own interest. So, in essence, conflicts uh, is destructive as it cannot bind the management and worker together. Management, in this sense, should therefore design organizational structure in a manner that everyone understand the policy and the rules clearly. So, the authority, responsibility, structure should be well defined so that everyone knows its limits of distraction. This will lead to a quick resolution of conflicts if at all it arises. So, in essence, uh, the organization in avoiding conflicts must have rules and regulations, must have policies which must be clearly documented for the people within the organization to know. Seeing as much they understand all this, it will go extra mile to reduce the conflicts that may arise within the organization. So the second approach is human relations approach. Human relations approach. This approach is also known as the behavioralist approach to conflict. So why the classical approaches? Uh, why the classical approach views that organizations should not have conflict at all? The human relation approach assumes 
that conflict is unavoidable. It is bound to happen because of differences, differences in opinion and perception among individuals. As conflicts cannot be avoided, it should be resolved for the benefit of the organization and individual. So what this human relation, relations approach is trying to say is that there is no way you can discard conflicts within the organization. That is, conflicts will, all, will always come up. But the best thing is to find a way or means of resolving conflict uh, situation so that it will not be a destructive one. Number three, interrationist approach. Interrationist approach. So while the human relations approach accepts that conflict is inevitable and therefore acceptable, the interrationist approach take a broader view of the conflict. The approach encourages conflict in the organization because of the belief that conflict promotes diverse opinion and belief. This promotes new ideas and easy adaptability to environment changes. So instead of uh, uh, completely eradicating uh, conflicts, the interactionist approach see conflicts as a means of interaction among different people on the organization. And through conflicts, the ideas, the new ideas will be generated, the new innovation will come up, and so this will help the organizational growth and development. So conflict keep the group's members lively in discussions and creative in idea generation. Therefore, conflict is promoted as it promotes organizational performance. From there, we move to causes of conflict. Causes of conflict. So on most occasions, the causative factors of conflicts are similar. Therefore, common factor that results in conflicts include the following. Number one, differences in perception. Differences in perception. What do we mean by differences in perception? Differences in perception values and attitude of individual or group over the same problem to lead to interpersonal or intergroup relationship. For instance, one group of individual may want that all employees within certain organization should use HP computers to maintain standardization. However, another group may promote different brand of computers to maintain individuality. So differences in views in this instance can lead to conflict. And what matter whether anyone use an HP uh, computer for uniformity or different people within diff uh, the organization use different computers. The essence is just to accomplish the organizational goal. That is to be able to use the uh, computer to do whatever tax the computer is needed for. So number two, number two, another uh, cause of conflict is excessive competition. Excessive competition. Excessive competition. 
organizational resources, men, material, money, space, etc., are scarce. And each unit wants a maximum share of them. So, in a situation like this, competition among units or component units within the organization for the maximum share of resources could lead to conflict. So, in a situation whereby every member of organization wants similar thing at the same time, especially those things that cannot go around at once, there is going to be a great competition. And if care is not taken, it can debar the progress of the organization. Number three, differences in goals. Differences in goals. Different goals of individual or group could lead to conflicts if care is not taken. So in order to maximize profits, for instance, the production department may want to produce limited varieties in large volume so that costs are minimized. We are asked the same department may feel that selling products of different sizes, different color, or different models can increase sales and thus minimize costs. So in essence, differences in group goals in this context could lead to conflicts between the two groups. So if care is not taken, it may even affect the quality of products. So in essence, most of the time, the differences in goals the management must be able to harmonize these differences so that it will not lead to the collapse of organization, be it public or private organization. Then number four, causes of conflicts, interdependence of tasks, interdependence of tasks. So when work is passed from one unit to the other, interdependence among units can lead to conflicts. The output of the first unit becomes the input of the second. However, if the first unit fails to process its work on time, the second unit will have to wait and wait. During the time of waiting, they remain idle till it received the process. So the period of waiting can cause uh, a sort of a resentment and it can bring about intergroup conflict. So whenever the work of one unit is depend on another unit, it is always advisable or encouraged that the unit or the starting unit must be assiduous. That is, they must work from time to time and work seriously to make sure that they accomplish their own tasks before the so that they can easily move the tasks to other units to continue with the activities. Number five, habit pattern. Habit patterns. So, some people like to argue and debate within the organization. They, they enjoy conflicts as a matter of habit. There is no way you can meet them in the body. They enjoy having conflicts with people. So, having conflicts to this category of people acts 
as a motivator for them to improve their performance. Except, uh, especially some conflict that will come in, in form of a critique, especially positive one. So, although people can understand uh, other people when they criticize them, but it is always good to take uh, to criticism, check yourself, and make amendment so that the organizational work can move on as a plan or better. So number six, personal characteristics. Personal characteristics. So, you know, there is individual difference. Group member differs in work's attitude, in age, in education, even in temperament, and of course, status level. The potential for intergroup conflict is high when you have these uh, categories of uh, people. When you have people of different attitudes, age group, different levels of education, temperaments, and different status. Within a group, definitely you expect some sorts of conflict. But that notwithstanding, this conflict must not be allowed to slow down the activities within organization. Then number seven, uh, ill-defined authority. Ill-defined authority, uh, responsibility relationship. So when the authority and responsibility of individual within an organization are not properly defined, People do not understand each other's role. This can cause conflict within the organization. When there is inconsistency in work activities and there is communication distortion or communication barriers, this can induce conflict and uh, it can disorganize the organization if proper care is not taken. So it is always advised, it, it is always uh, advisable that uh, the uh, management within the organization have a well-stated uh, uh, structure within the organization. The responsibility of each member of the organization to be well stated, well documented, and well communicated so that there will be no distortion or laxity in the performance of an organizational work. So from there, let us quickly look at the consequences of conflicts. Consequences of conflicts. Another area of relationship with regards to the conflict has to do with the consequences of conflicts. Conflict in terms of relationship has both, has both positive and negative consequences. So what I'm trying to say is that Conflicts, when in, in terms of a relationship, they have both positive and negative consequences. Positive conflict is known as functional conflict, and negative conflict is known as dysfunctional conflict. Positive conflict. As we know, conflict is not only inevitable, it is also desirable under positive conflict. 
It is constructive and encourages new ideas to solve organizational problems. It promotes change and keep the organization going in the desired direction. So, with regard to conflicts within the organization, it has following positive consequences. Number one, high degree of coercion. High degree of coercion. Intergroup conflicts give rise to commitment and loyalty among members of the group. Group members unite together, take advantage of opportunities, overcome threats, and take strong action to resolve their problem. All members of the group work together for a common goal. It, it's a, a, a high degree of coercion to occur if people of different group compete with, with each other. So in order to do better, members of each group work together. They become loyal and banded to reach to each other, which promotes organizational performance. Number two, improvement, improvement of quality decision. Improvements of quality decisions. When group members face conflicts, they think of all possible solutions to the problem. They evaluate the decisions, different decisions that they arrive at, they evaluate them and use their creative and innovative ability to arrive at the best decision. So, intergroup conflicts thus improve the quality of decision and stimulate creativity and innovation. When people have conflicting opinion, they deeply analyze the facts of the case. A deep understanding of concepts promote new thinking, new ideas, and thereby fosters innovations. When innovations and new ideas uh, came up or comes up, then the organization will benefit from it and thereby it will bring about high productivities. Number three, uh, emergence of leaders. Emergence of leaders. You will agree with me that everybody does not think alike in a conflicting situation. Group members bestow power on those who can positively contribute to the problem situation to take decisions. Increased power gives rise to leaders who act as a group captain. In essence, this will reduce rivalry among members to become group leaders. Then number four, response to change response to change. Conflicts promote change. If people do not really agree with each other, differences in opinions, values, and perceptions uh, introduce new ways of working that are different from traditional thinking. Conflict challenge the existing state of affairs. That is when conflict occurs, it challenges the existing state of affairs and promotes new ideas and reassessment of current group practices. In essence, conflict signals something wrong 
with the present system and thereby it will promote the ability to assess and present new ideas for a better future, thereby increases the responsiveness of the group to change. Number five, increased productivity. Increased productivity. It has been proved beyond the reasonable doubt that the productivity of conflicting groups is more than those which have a close agreement among the members. Members with different perception and interests produce high quality solutions to problems. This improves the productivity of, productivity of the group. Conflicts has the ability or tendency to, to highlight weaknesses in the existing system of management. These weaknesses can be removed to improve the efficiency of the organization operating system. Then, conflicts releases strain. Releases strain. If group members do not agree, do not agree with predefined values and norms. Conflict gives them a ground for voicing their reservation. This, when they were they are able to voice out their reservation, it releases strain and that would otherwise remain suppressed in their minds. In conflicting situations, people openly express their thoughts, they express their feelings. Even if they are against the thought process of other members of organization, and of course, this releases strength and provides mental satisfaction to all members. So let let us now consider negative conflicts, negative conflicts or dysfunctional conflicts. In positive conflicts, differences in opinion do not hurt any one's feeling. People respect each other's ideas and thereby arrive at new solutions to problems to develop working relationship. In negative conflict, however, people show this respect for others' ideas. They aim to promote their interests at the cost of others. That is why it is being termed as a destructive or dysfunctional. So the negative consequence of, conf of uh, this type of conflict include one, mental strain. Excessive conflict creates tension and frustration among people. This not only harms the individual, as they may enter into a state of discretion, but also harm the organization. People do not positively contribute to organizational productivity when there is mental strain. Number two, discontentment. Discontentment. Conflict breeds discontentment. And when there is discontentment, the ability to think effectively will reduce. The ability to, 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 to think or the power to think creatively will reduce. So if people do not arrive at mutual agreeable solution, it results in discontentment. People are not satisfied with their job, and this lowers organizational productivity. And you can see that this is very bad to organizational growth. 
and progress. The negative conflicts also bring about communication breakdown. It bring, brings about communication breakdown. So when individuals or group develop conflicting ideas, they, they have tendency of avoiding or interacting with each other. And when communication reduces among the people within the group, so there will be loss of productive ideas. People will not be able to share their ideas, their initiative for the progress of the organization. And this will affect seriously the organization. So as conflict leads to disagreement and communication breakdown, people do not agree with each other. And this will lead to the splitting up of the organization into different groups. And people divert energy from organizational groups and lead to instability in the organizational structure. Number four, resignation. Resignation. So, discontentment under dysfunctional conflicts can lead to resignation from job. People can just uh, resign when they, they are not okay or things is not all going well with them within the department or the organization in which they are working. If results are not in favor of people who strongly oppose certain decisions, they do not wish to work in those organizations again and look for other job outlets. And if these people are dynamic and creative individuals, it is a loss for the organization. So by the time different people with creative idea, with energy, continue to leave this organization, it's, it will bring about the collapse of the organization. Then number five, distorted perception. Distorted perception. So, groups hold strong perception about their activities and disregard those of the other group. They highlight their strong points and competition and competitors' weak points. So, under this dysfunctional conflict, one group will highlight their strong points, but those are people who people at the opposing side, they, 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 they highlight their weak points. And when this happens, it leads to deviation from organizational goals. Instead of uh, focusing on what will benefit the organization, they will be nursing the idea of how to combat their opponents. The number six, competitive struggle. Competitive struggle. Uh, competitive struggle leads to, 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 to a, a, a big problem within the organization. It can disorganize the organization. Instead of, uh, for instance, instead of arriving at a consensus, or to agree on certain things, or to settle among themselves, competitive struggle will decline the group ability to think and act positively. Everybody wants his own ideas to prevail, whether it is good or bad. Instead of coming into agreement on certain things that are good for the organizations and for the growth and development, the people within the organization, they will not. Instead, everyone, every, every individual will want to uh, remain adamant to his, or to his 
or a, a, a decision. So when that thing continues to happen, if it is not checked on time, it can disrupt the organization completely. Um, number seven, subordination of group goals to individual goals. So member promotes personal goals rather than group goals under a uh, disruptive uh, conflict. They think of ways to promote their interests rather than organizational interests. This reduces organizational efficiency. People divert energy from constructive to destructive thinking. They think on how to win over complex situation rather than pursuing organizational objective. Short time personal problem does supersede the long time interest of organization. People focus on personal goals at the cost of organizational goals. This results in goal displacement as the short time perspective overpower the long time perspective. Then from there, um, let's quickly talk about the management of conflicts. Management of conflicts. The management of conflicts. So, in the area of management of conflicts, conflicts can be said to be related. Therefore, conflicts are resolved in related ways. So, in managing conflicts, um, this method can be used. The following method can be used. I will just give you just two points there. One, stimulation of functional conflicts. Stimulation of functional conflicts. The following method helps to stimulate or encourage constructive conflict. Number one, bring managers with background value and style, different from those who are presently working in the organization. Bringing managers with new backgrounds, with values and style, different from those who are presently working in the organization. Number two, add or delete individual and group to the existing network. This will redistribute power and thus stimulate conflict. Number three, break old team and department and reorganize them. That is new work. Members and responsibility will be created, requiring adjustments. Requiring adjustments. with each other. This will give rise to conflicts and new improved method of operation. Number four, allow members to openly communicate with each other. Number five, foster competition by paying financial and non-financial incentive for good performance. That is try and motivate good performance within the organization. Number six, replace authoritarian manager with behavioral manager. Number seven, create an environment of creative and innovative thinking within the organization. And number eight, introduce changes in people changes in structure and changes in uh, technology. Number nine, allow compromise with each party, especially when there is uh, misunderstanding. 
don't take don't side one party to the detriment of the other party so that is about that then number two resolution of dysfunctional conflict resolution of dysfunctional conflict this method suppress or resolve conflict rather than promote them so they are as follow a introduce changes in organization structure so that conflicting parties are separated and placed at different position b introduce a facilitative style of management where decisions reflect the opinion of all c integrates individual goals with organizational goals so that both individual and organization promote each other's interest d Manager should call the conflicting party, listen to their arguments, and try to get one side into giving in. This could be helped when the manager has more information than the party and he can satisfy each one of them. E. Provide incentive. Incentive in this context could be financial or non-financial. To hold rather than to those who report outstanding performance. F. Install training program for improving relationship among individuals and groups. G. Avoiding action or taking no action. Avoiding action or taking no action. Saying that information is insufficient, we postpone and resolve the conflict on its own. So H, conflict can be resolved through compromise. Manager can convince each party to sacrifice some objectives in order to gain order. So let's quickly look at five ways of addressing conflict. Five ways of addressing conflict. Since features and causes of conflict are, are related, the following can help in addressing conflict. One, avoidance. One should avoid or one should try to avoid or ignore uh, anything that can cause uh, conflict. Avoidance can be useful as a temporary measure to buy time or as an expedient means of dealing with minor, non recurring conflicts. Number two, collaboration. People should work together to find a mutual beneficial solution to the problem. Though this is a win-win solution to the conflict, collaboration can also be time intensive and uh, inappropriate if trust, respect, or communication is absent among participants. Number three, compromise. Conflicting party to find a middle ground in which each party is partially satisfied so that the organizational activities will be able to continue unabated or unrestricted. Then, number four, competition. Both parties should assert their viewpoints at the potential expense of another. It can be useful when achieving one's objective that is at weight one's concern for the relationship. And the last one, accommodation. So if the above measure do not help to resolve conflicts, one party surrender 
its needs and wishes to accommodate the other party. So I want to thank you for listening. So if you have any question regarding our discussion so far, you are free to chat with me. I'll be available to answer you. So have a blessed day. Thank you very much. Bye.